right now on Five on Your Side at 10. Tonight, an I-Team exclusive. A city jail whistleblower says city officials are lying. It was a full riot. They can say what they want, it was a riot. What he says happened the morning a guard was taken hostage. Well, on the final day of August, we hit 80 degrees. We know that's not very normal. What the difference between where we should be and where we were is and what we're expecting as we head into the month of September. But first tonight, no regrets. People are walking out of their doors and they're seeing the change. The mayor of Jennings defends his actions after resignations, lawsuits, and canceled meetings. First tonight, a story you'll only see on Five on Your Side, the mayor of Jennings breaking his silence. Good evening, I'm Mike Bush. And I'm Ann Allred. Mayor Gary Johnson says he's on a mission to move his city forward, despite members of his own council publicly at odds over his leadership. Five on Your Side's Brent Solomon is live at City Hall now with his exclusive interview. Brent. Well, Mayor Johnson tells me the reason he's in office right now is because the people put him here back in April to bring change. But I'm personal and I put my heart and passion in this job. It's why perhaps these images of Mayor Gary Johnson trying to block an emergency city council meeting from happening raised eyebrows. As the chief executive officer of this building, which is the city of Jennings building, I have the authority to open and close the building. It was August 18th. Council members met anyway to try to overturn resignations and terminations the mayor recommended. Now the city is suing to declare that meeting invalid. The mayor, uh, I um, confirm or accept agendas. So that agenda had not been sent to me to confirm or reject. And we had people um, in the meeting executing things in the meeting that no longer worked here. Afterwards, five council members signed a letter announcing their plans to take a vote of no confidence towards Johnson, claiming in part he's created a hostile working environment. Have staff resigned under your leadership? We, we did have staff resign, and we only had, we only had two city staff resign. Have there been terminations? There were there were there were terminations earlier this month that were voted on by the council. Did you have any any influence on those terminations or resignations? I most definitely did. He says he's trying to create a better city hall. Residents should feel comfortable walking in this building with a question and leave with the answer. And that's what has changed here. The vote of no confidence never happened because at the next scheduled council meeting, those five leaders didn't show up. Have you heard from any of those five council members since the meeting? I have not. Mm -hmm. Have you reached out? Um, I've reached out. Take a look at your screen tonight. I got this statement from council member Nadia Quinn quote. I'm working at the moment to attempt to save this great city from absolute litigation. Mayor Johnson is unwilling to admit to any mistakes. Therefore, he is unwilling to make any attempt to correct the unethical illegal votes that took place during closed session. The council will do what is necessary to protect the city of Jennings from his abuse of power end quote. You can watch my full unedited interview with the mayor right now on KSDK.com. Mike. Brent, thanks. You're looking live now downtown. It's a cool night for August. Weather first meteorologist Gary Frank is in for Scott tonight and things are about to change, Gary. Yeah, a little bit. You know, we, we're not we know we're still going to get hot even as we work our way into September and through the month of September. But it's nice to get a little bit of a break, especially as we go outside right now. It's a great evening to be on the patio and look at the airport. It's quiet outside. Even in the city, it's still pretty mild right now at this hour. Temperatures felt steady at 69 degrees and east breeze at five miles an hour. That dry air still remaining in place. And I think just like last night, you can open up the windows if you have not done so already. We're headed for another cool night with 57 degrees and a light breeze. What we're focusing on into the holiday weekend is going to remain dry and pretty nice. We're going to start to gradually get more humid and temperatures will work their way back above average. Our average high right now is about 86 degrees and over the coming week things will change and that's going to be the big story for us as we head into that weekend. Rain chances will also start to increase as we see that humidity rise. We'll discuss how that may impact sort of some of your holiday weekend and of course track our temperatures as we work our way in the month of September. 
Another inmate from the St. Louis City Justice Center died today. That's the second inmate in less than a week to die. Public safety leaders are saying little about today's death other than it was a medical emergency. He was taken to SLU Hospital where he later died. Autopsies on both inmates are still pending toxicology results. Meanwhile, our I-team is getting new perspective on another incident at the Justice Center just last week. An employee who knows all too well about what goes on inside says their bosses aren't being honest about a hostage situation earlier this month. They sat down with our Christine Byers telling her frequent failures are leading to a dangerous situation. It was a full riot. They can say what they want, it was a riot. This worker at the city's criminal justice center asked us to hide his identity so he wouldn't lose his job. What he called a riot began at 6 a.m. August 22nd. Two inmates attacked a 73-year-old guard and held him hostage in a shower. The I-team obtained this footage showing how it started. How was an officer left alone with two inmates like that? I don't care what anybody says, those two people shouldn't have been out. Following the attack, Jail Commissioner Jennifer Clemens Abdullah defended the center's procedures. We had adequate staffing, and it was doing a normal operation of serving of the meal. Uh, and they saw our opportunity and they took it. That was a lie, and I think everybody knows it's a lie. Only one person should have been out at a time. And arguably they should have been uh, handcuffed or shackled. And when the jail commissioner said the inmates were passing out breakfast trays? The idea of an inmate in a, in a special management unit helping pass trays is, is, is asinine. The guard was shackled in the shower for two and a half hours before a police SWAT team rescued him. In that time, inmates trashed the place, according to the employee. When the inmates took the keys and took over the security bubble, uh, they were able to go over to the other unit and start letting people out. But at least 40 or 50 of them came out. People were assaulted on both sides from people in the opposite unit. Um, the, the bubbles, the security bubbles were destroyed. They pulled out the fire extinguishers and were using them on the officers. Um, and they, they popped the sprinkler heads. Um, they, pull, they jumped and pulled down the TVs in one of the units. The I-team also obtained this still image of officers inside the unit. Do you think that city officials were truthful when they were describing what happened? No. No, all they wanted people to know was about the hostage situation. They didn't want people to know that there was a riot. This wasn't the first time something like this has happened. In 2021, the city's downtown justice center made national news when inmates broke windows and set fires. What is the difference between this riot and the riot that happened a few years ago? Not a lot of them. They didn't break out the outside windows. The employee says tensions have been brewing because Clemens Abdullah's administration is not following its own policies. And our policy says that they're supposed to get wrecked every day. They shouldn't be locked down for more than 23 hours a day. That's the policy. That's the standard. That's the national standard. But we don't follow that. We're not designed for punishment. It's a jail. It's pretrial. This isn't prison. Do you just think that type of treatment leads to violence? I think for an extended period of time, it does, yeah. These guys that you've been pushing and leaning on for some of them months at a time, um, you can't be surprised when they act out. I, I don't know what human wouldn't. For the I-Team, Christine Byers, five on your side. Now, the I-Team has asked the mayor's office how much damage was caused to the jail, and they also made a request for surveillance footage from the attack. The mayor's office has not yet responded. We will update this story when we hear back. If you have a tip for Christine and the Five on Your Side I team, you can leave a voice message. That number is 314-444-5231. Or you can email Christine at tips at ksdk.com. All calls and correspondence will be kept confidential. The man who pled guilty to stalking women across the country was in a St. Louis County courtroom. Our I-team has followed repeat cyberstalker Robert Merkel for years. Today, a judge sentenced Merkel to seven years in prison. He's already in prison after a guilty plea in federal court for similar crimes. This sentence will be served concurrently. The newly, former, the newly formed Charter Commission is facing a challenge the day after its inaugural meeting. The nine-member panel is tasked with rewriting the city's charter, which is more than 100 years old. Now a group of attorneys and retired judges in the Holy Joe Society are suing to dissolve the Charter Commission, arguing its very existence is illegal and unconstitutional, and any amendments to the charter would have to come from the Board of Aldermen. Today is International Overdose Awareness Day, and to continue fighting the opioid epidemic, St. Louis County announced all of their libraries will now carry the life-saving overdose medication, Narcan.
Individuals who need a kit can request one with no questions asked. While library employees will not administer the Narcan, the library social workers that I mentioned earlier are trained and authorized to administer the drug in the event of an opioid overdose. Last year, 449 people died due to a drug overdose in St. Louis County. That's actually an 11% decrease from 2021. St. Louis area families have been fighting overdoses for decades, and tonight they remembered the loved ones they lost. People gathered in Kirkwood for a vigil and overdose awareness walk. And five on your side, Laura Barczewski has more now. She joins us in studio. Mike and Ann, the organizers of this overdose awareness event honored the families and the loved ones they lost to drug overdose with a prayer and by saying their names so they'll never be forgotten. I lost my son, Karen Clark. I lost my son, Brandon Davis. Uh, it was September 20th, 2018. Robbie Rainwater, Forever 31. The founder of the peer grief support group, Soul, says their mission with events like this and their work every day is to reduce the stigma around substance use disorders that not only impacts those who are addicted, but also their families. To show the true magnitude of this epidemic, posters with hundreds of faces lost to overdoses lined the fence of Concordia Lutheran Church and along the bottom, shoes to represent each victim taken too soon. One organizer said she lost her son to an overdose when he he was just 21. The availability of Narcan is so critical. I, I carry it in my car. Um, it, and I think if that had been available with my son, maybe he would have made it that night. Ben was a great guy. I miss him every day and always will. They released doves over the crowd before they hit the streets with posters honoring each person they lost with the hopes of showing others they're not alone in fighting addiction. If you or someone you love is struggling with addiction, we have links on KSDK.com to resources. Making recruitment an international affair. We're very excited to welcome our new teachers. The school district taking the search for teachers overseas. Gearing up for the holiday weekend. But before you fill up, is all gas created equal? Our Verify team finds out. Lows over the last week, remember last week, 83 degrees. We didn't even get there for a high today, and our average is 66, but the 58 this morning, we've got another repeat. How cool it gets tonight and why things go the other direction over the next few days. The Riverview Garden School District recently made international moves to hire new teachers. And as our Robert Townsend explains, officials say overseas recruitment is helping them combat an ongoing teacher shortage issue. This is a slideshow and photos of the new diverse group of teachers now calling the Riverview Gardens School District in North St. Louis County home. And one thing that I've noticed is they are really excited to be here. The 26 international teachers are from a variety of countries. Uh, right now there are 20 that are here um, and they come from South Africa, East African nations and the Philippines and we're really excited for them to come and join our scholars. The teachers also have a wide range of experience in the classroom. Some that may be three or four years, and we have some that are in double digits, 10 or more years as well. Experience Riverview Gardens officials say will help enhance their school district and expand their elementary, middle, and high school students' minds. Some of them are PhDs, some of them have master's degrees. There will bring a different culture to our students. They'll bring some different life experience to our students and they're going to learn the American culture as well. Right now Riverview Gardens new recruits are still undergoing orientation. In two weeks they'll be in their new classrooms. Before the pandemic the school district had been down about 50 teachers. Thanks to the international hires that number is now less than half. It could be a good deal for them. Soraya Jones' son is a seventh grader at Central Middle School. I think it's a good idea. You know, they get to learn more. School districts now have to be creative and expand their horizon in terms of looking for teachers to, uh, to teach our students. Robert Townsend, five on your side. The school district partnered with the International Teacher Recruitment Agency, Jobs Connect, to also help the teachers with housing, transportation, and to get acclimated to St. Louis.
Student health is top of mind in the Ferguson Florissant and School District. Students there will now have access to free mental health and tutoring services. The district is partnering with Hazel Health and Varsity Tutors. The therapy will be available at home and at school. A longtime St. Louis favorite is closing its doors after more than 40 years in business. Owners of the original Crusoe's restaurant on Osceola announced the closure on Facebook. They say a rough summer with multiple power outages and other issues led to this decision. The family-owned restaurant will remain open for the next couple of weeks. Are you planning to squeeze a little more out of summer by traveling on Labor Day weekend? That means filling up the tank. With gas prices climbing, everyone's looking for a bargain. You can often find one at your local Sam's Club or Costco. But is there any difference between the two when it comes to the gas quality? Let's verify. Most savvy consumers know warehouse clubs like Costco and Sam's Club have cheaper fuel. But is there any difference between the two? Let's verify. Is the gas quality the same at Sam's Club and Costco? Our sources, AAA, TopTierGas.com, and the Environmental Protection Agency, which sets gasoline regulations. According to AAA, all gas starts as a base fuel. Retailers take this base fuel and add a different blend of additives. The additives clean and protect the engine of a car. In 1990, the EPA required all gas retailers to use a minimum level of additives to keep an engine clean. But in 2004, some automakers decided these additives just weren't cutting it and established a gas standard called Top Tier Gas, which requires more additives, mainly detergents. AAA put Top Tier Gas to the test using an independent lab, and the results show Top Tier Gas does make a difference. After about 4,000 miles, testers found that Top Tier Gas caused 19 times fewer carbon deposits in engines. It's definitely going to be uh, better for your engine than not. Uh, that's what the research has found. And when I asked the EPA, they agreed. Spokesperson Shayla Powell told me top tier standards can provide useful benefits to consumers beyond the regulatory minimums. And that's where Sam's Club and Costco come in. Costco has top tier gas. Sam's Club does not. We can verify, no, the gas quality is not the same at Sam's Club and Costco. Costco is a top tier gasoline retailer, meaning the fuel includes more detergents and keeps your engine cleaner over time. I asked the EPA, why don't they make top tier gas additives? The law. They said the agency's standards are based on emissions associated with the use of those additives. And while there's data to show top tier fuel has vehicle performance benefits, there's not enough research to show it has emissions benefits. I did give Sam's Club several weeks to comment on this story. The company did not respond. Meteorologist Gary Frank is in for Scott. He joins us now with that weather first forecast. And Gary, no complaints from oh, anybody about this it's gorgeous beautiful. weather. I know, nice and cool already. Feels good. Great patio weather. A lot of people have the extended weekend off, take tomorrow off, and carrying it all the way through the Labor Day weekend. And, you know, it's, it's as good as it gets right now because we're getting the nice mix where it's cooler right now and then it warms up and you can enjoy the outdoor activities for not necessarily one last time, but one of the last times. And we talk about fall being here and near. We're still technically three weeks or so away from it. But when you hear meteorological fall tomorrow, it's for record purposes. We're going to shut the book on summer and then we're going to start to talk about September, October, November. That's our fall months. Autumnal equinox is because of Earth's position. It's at 149 a.m. on the 23rd. We're days away from that, but it feels like fall outside right now. Low to mid 60s here, uh, close to 70 even in the city, but we're going to cool down nicely here. And I think anything under 60 tonight is going to be a top 25 cool morning again. So like I said, it's not normal for us to have overnight lows that drop down into the 50s like this. And we'll see that I think even in the city, once again, about 57 and you'll see those numbers outside of the city, low 50s, right around 49 at the lowest, just like we had this morning. It was cool. It's pretty nice. And tomorrow we're going to be a little warmer tomorrow. Low humidity again, temps in the mid 80s overall, Florissant 85 as well, uh, you know, Melville 85. So pretty quiet. It's going to be a much different night on the gridiron for our tackle hunger game of the week. This is Breeze, Modern Day and Central. Kickoff 79, fourth quarter 70. Low humidity, a jacket for the second half of that game. It'll be cooler, but not quite as much. Overall, we're not going to see too much rain over the next few days, and our latest drought monitor still has some areas in the moderate drought. But for the most part, the city is not involved in that. Some of the areas in the Metro East starting to creep back into that. And the reason we mentioned that is because rainfall potential over the next 10 days is pretty low. This is a month that will at least try to get about three to four inches of rain. In the next 10 days, we're not going to see that. 
It's something to at least note, I think, as we head into the weekend, the extended weekend. Rain chance may increase Monday evening. Otherwise, it's dry for you the next few days. Your Labor Day weekend specifically, I think, goes from 91 Saturday. It may feel like about 93, 94. We're going to start to increase the humidity on Sunday. And then by Monday, maybe an evening storm. Most of that is by the time you're already inside. Temps going up into the low to mid 90s and then cooling back down slightly with slight chances for rain overall heading into next week. All right, thank you so much. Let's get to Frank. Well, Mizzou opened up their season tonight, and Brady Cook looked sharp. Highlights of that game, the Lindenwood opener, and we'll hear from Mason Wynn and Roman Burke. The Sports Desk is sponsored by Jim Butler Chevrolet, the Midwest's number one Chevy dealer, 10 years running. South Dakota came to Columbia to get a paycheck and not be embarrassed. They did that. As for Mizzou, well, the skilled position players are about the St. Louis kids. Chaminade, East St. Louis, and Lutheran South should be proud. Coach Drink led the team out of the tunnel on a gorgeous night in Columbia. 50,000 on hand for the opener. Brady Cook, Chaminade, completed his first 11 passes, including this touchdown to Makai Miller. Cook went 17-21 in the first half, and he also ran for a touchdown. Mizzou's defense showed up big early. This is Johnny Walker Jr. on the sack. Luther Burden, East St. Louis, had a big game. Seven receptions, 96 yards. Good throw there by Brady. And that touchdown machine from last year, Cody Schrader, Lutheran South, got it in the end zone. Schrader rushed for 148 yards. Fourth quarter, Sam Horn throws his first touchdown pass as a college quarterback to Luther. What a play there by Luther Burden. Zoo wins it 35 to 10. Jed Stugart and Lindenwood in their second year of Division I football hosting Wisconsin Stevens Point, and they put on a show. Cole Duggar hooks up with Spencer Red and he turns on the Jets. This is going to be a 60-yard touchdown. Lindenwood wins tonight, 77 to nine. So the Cardinals are off today. They will host the Pirates over the weekend. And although this team has not played a set lineup all year, there's no reason not to start Mason Wynn every game from now to the end of the season. I know he's only hitting 171, but who cares? The season is shot. Now it should be about getting this 21-year-old some reps. When Wynn came to the plate in the ninth inning yesterday, he was one for his last 18. It didn't look good when he quickly fell behind a nasty closer, Josh Hader, 0-2. But he connected on the next pitch, keeping the game alive with a hustling double. That hit set the stage for Tommy Edmonds' walk-off homer. And Wynn said after the game, he got help from a very good friend. You know, I was just trying to choke up and battle. Um, thankfully, Jordan Walker let me use his bat, that AB. So, you know, I think it's got a little bit of magic in it. So, how did that transpire? Right? I saw him get four knocks and, and got to watch it today. What, you know, obviously a triple away from the cycle, and just walked up to him and said, "Hey, man, like mine's not working. Let me see. Let me see if yours has hits." And, and sure enough, it did. This five on your side, St. Louis City SC coverage is sponsored by Together Credit Union. So last night, City SC was seconds away from an eighth clean sheet this season when the normally sure-handed Roman Berkey gave up a rebound and Dallas scored what would be a meaningless goal in City's 2-1 game. But Berkey was not a happy guy after that and at night's sleep didn't make the hurt go away. I'm sorry for the for the whole team you know uh, we worked hard for that uh, clean sheet um, and we deserved that and then one stupid little mistake uh, yeah that's the life of a goalkeeper, you know, you should not make these mistakes, but uh, they happened and I'm the only positive thing is like that it happened uh, yesterday when we were 2-0 up and uh, the game was almost uh, finished, so yeah. That is a competitor and a perfectionist. He's been incredible all season long. He has the second highest total of saves in the MLS this, this season. He's the reason that they're in first place. Yeah, I think we'll keep him. Yeah. All right, Frank, thanks. No need for bad blood if you couldn't catch Taylor Swift in concert. You are now in luck where you can rock out with other Swifties. Well, here's something you don't see every day. Police in Nebraska had to pull over a car because a man was driving around with a bull in his passenger seat. The car had been modified to fit the bull named Howdy Doody. The owner removed half the roof and the windshield and added a metal guardrail to the passenger side.
Howdy Doody and his owner were sent home with just a warning. We're told the owner just likes the attention. That it smells good in there. <laughs> Taylor Swift is bringing her heiress tour to the big screen this fall. AMC will run the concert starting October 13th. Tickets are already on sale. The company says it will run at least four showings per day on Thursdays, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. Swift encourages fans to wear heiress gear and sing and dance inside the theater. And Gary has one final check of our weekend weather. Yeah, I can't wait to go outside, roll the windows down on the way home. It's going to feel very nice. And if you haven't opened the windows up overnight, it's going to be another nice break for the AC before it works a little harder than it has been of recent temps overnight. And in the mid 50s, upper 50s, even in town, feels pretty nice. We'll see one last morning of this before it gets hot and humid again. And there you have it. Five on your side at 10. The Tonight Show is next. Start your day with today in St. Louis beginning at 4 a.m. And have a great tomorrow.